How to find the best polish for you. Hi, I'm Ivan LaCroix and this is the Detailers Business Academy, where we strive to take you from detailer to entrepreneur. Now, finding the best compound or polish for you is quite easy. Go look at your shelf, take one off there. That's probably the best one you need. But there are ways of testing compounds to make sure that they're compatible with what you're doing. If you're applying coatings, you don't want a compound that's filling. You don't want a compound that is injecting solvents into the paint. No, you want a compound that leaves the surface clean and leaves it with just paint. Now, there's a lot of different ways of testing compounds, and I've tested many, many, many compounds and polishes over the years and continue to do so for different companies. But when you're testing compounds, there's a few very simple tests you can do, and it applies to compounds and polishes. I'll just call them compounds. But when you're testing them, there's a few very simple tests you can do that will help you determine whether it's the right product for you. First thing you want to do is scuff up the panel. And by scuff it up, take a wool pad on your rotary, not necessarily clean, and scuff up your scrap panel. And use a scrap panel. Don't use a customer's car for this. Once you've got it scuffed up and you can see the marring on the surface, that's what you want. First test you want to do to see if your compound is cutting or filling is one of simply applying the compound to that surface. So all you want to do, make a little square and apply the compound but without rubbing. So you pat it on the surface. Then let it sit there for a minute. Then pat it off. Again, you want no mechanical action whatsoever because that mechanical action will give you correction no matter what you do. So you don't want any mechanical corrective action. You just want to pat it on, pat it off. Then take a look at that little square. Is it different than the surrounding area or is it the same? If it's different, that means you've had solvents migrate from the compound into that clear coat and giving you the appearance of correction without actually having corrected. Now, the next thing you want to do is do a little test. Again, you don't want to polish to perfect correction. You just want to see what the compound is doing. So if you're trying to compare two different compounds, you want to take a scrap panel, sand it with 2000 grit, and go at it for a few seconds. You don't want to polish until you get correction. You want to see the difference between two different products. So if you're doing a comparison test, trying to determine which one is the best for you, which one cuts the fastest, what have you. Start with that 2000 grit sanded panel, then polish for five seconds, not five minutes, five seconds. And I use a drill press to do it. So I put my pad on a drill press and I can control the time, but also the pressure that's applied. But do it your own way. Uh, use a new pad for each compound. That way you have no variance whatsoever. And when you do that, again, only five seconds, then you can compare which one actually does cut more. Is it A or B? And once you've done that cutting, and I only use a three inch pad for this, but once you've done that initial cut, then you want to mask off half of what you've done. And then you want to check it with something that's going to remove any solvents or oils that the compound may have left behind. So you actually see the correction that it's done. And one of my favorite products for that is a simple mix of one third acetone and two thirds original Windex. You can also use a quality APC to do the same type of work. Once you've seen that the compound isn't filling and that it's correcting instead of filling, that's great. And if you're using it to prepare before a coating, that's extremely important. Now, if you're a product of choice, the compound that you love to use, you've been using it for years, it's a great compound for you. But you do these tests and you find out that it's filling and it's not leaving the paint perfectly clean. There's a way around that. Again, do your compounding as best as you can, make it look good, then Go at it with an APC before polishing. And that APC will reveal what actual correction you did versus what filling you did. Once you've eliminated that filling, then you can move on to polishing. Another aspect of polishing that a lot of people overlook is heat generation. And heat generation is extremely negative to what we're doing. And again, with a scrap panel, you can do some fun testing. One of those tests is to see the effect that heat has on a panel. Now, Again, sand to 2000 grit, just so you have a nice, even, level surface. Using same machine, same pad, well, same pads, but 
two brand new pads once again. Do one section, let's say for 30 seconds. Again, you're not going for full correction. You're just seeing how much it will work in that span of time. Whether you're using a rotary or a DA, and I prefer a rotary, but whether you're using a rotary or a DA, it doesn't matter. What you want to do is put it on a very low speed. So if you're using a rotary, put it at the lowest speed it'll go. If you're using a DA, put it at the speed that you still get backing plate rotation. Normally around two or three on a long stroke DA. Then from there, using no pressure whatsoever, go at one section for 30 seconds. And that one section, all you're doing is moving the machine in a very small area. So you're going to limit that area with tape and you're going to limit it in the exact same area for the second part of the test. Now you're going to do that for 30 seconds and wipe it off and you'll see the result that you get. Now in the other section, you're going to create heat. And when I started detailing, heat was actually a good thing when you were polishing. When we were polishing lacquer paint, you wanted heat. Heat was necessary. Today's modern clear coats do not react well to heat. You know, think of it as a marshmallow and an ice cube. If you take sandpaper to an ice cube, you're going to remove ice. If you take sandpaper to a marshmallow, you're just moving things around. You're not actually going to be removing any of the marshmallow. Now, with compounding and polishing, it's the same thing. If you create too much heat, your abrasive, instead of cutting the surface, just sort of grabs and rolls, grabs and rolls. And it's not as effective as it should be. So again, second part of the test. Crank it up. Put some pressure on the machine and heat up that surface for 30 seconds. And then look at what correction you've done between the two areas. And it may seem that you've done more correction on the part that you had a lot of pressure on. But there are other parts of this test. Now, you want to use either the prep solution that I mentioned before, the acetone and Windex, or an APC. Divide those sections in two, and then, from there, wipe half of that. And see what results you get. Is there a difference between the area that you compounded and the area that you compounded and wiped off? If there isn't, great. If there is, then again, you're seeing swelling and things like that. Now, the next part of the test is a little long. It's going to take a few weeks. You want to take that panel, just put it outside. Leave it there. Identify what your two sections are. Put it outside. Leave it there. Let it see weather. Wash it once in a while, like a normal car would be. Then come back and look at it. And you may find some very surprising things. First of all, the area that you superheated when you first did it might have looked great in terms of correction. But in the long run, that swelling eventually goes down. And I call it the Botox effect. Meaning that when you're polishing and your polish has solvents in it, when you're heating up that paint, it slightly swells. And clear coat is basically a piece of plastic. It's a sheet of plastic over the car. Now, you're swelling that plastic a little bit, opening up the pores, and those solvents are getting in. Once those solvents are in there, they take a little while to come up. And we can remove some of them by the APC or the, the prep solvent wipe. But again, when we let it sit for a few weeks, we get to see what the real results are. And not many people are patient enough to do that when they're testing a product. But it's something that needs to be done. You know, we've all driven by the dealership that has the car up on the little stand. And it's a beautiful black car. The first day that they put it there, it looked great. But unfortunately, at the dealership level, there's a lot of uh, misconceptions about detailing. They think that the cheapest product is the best, and it isn't always the best, and it isn't always the cheapest. No, because the person that's doing the detailing at the dealership has great intentions. Nobody goes into work in the morning saying, I'm going to screw up a car today. No. And if they do, well, they won't be there much longer. But they're forced to use, let's say, lower quality products their pads may not be the best, and their training may not be the best. So they put the car up on the stand. It looks great. It looks wonderful. Two, three weeks later, you see holograms everywhere on it. Well, that's because the solvents that are in the products that they use, and the cheaper the product, generally the more solvents it contains, because solvents are inexpensive. And let me be a little more precise there. Hydrocarbon solvents. Water is the world's most prevalent solvent. Water is a solvent, but hydrocarbon solvents. Once those hydrocarbon solvents have evaporated away from the surface, that's when you get to see the holograms and all the weird things that happen to that paint. Because the swelling has gone down. Like Botox, it doesn't last forever. So on your test panel, let it sit. 
be patient. Wash it once in a while and see what the results are. Once it stops evolving and stops changing, that's when you'll see the real result of what that product is doing. So choosing a compound isn't as simple as going on Facebook and going, ooh, which compound should I use? Everybody's different. Everybody has different techniques. Everybody has different wants, needs, and desires. And finding the compound that's right for you will require a bit of work on your part. But once you've found it, stop shopping around. If you know that it's working for you, if you know that a product is doing what you want it to do, there's no need to go look elsewhere. Perfect your skills with that product. Get better with that product. Know that product in and out. And this might be a little surprising for some people, but you don't need a variety of compounds. Really, you do not. And you'll have some people, oh, but on soft paint, I use this one. And on hard paint, I use that one. No. Perfect your technique instead. If you get good with one compound and one polish, you will have better results than the person that's got a shelf full of products and mixes and matches and tries this and tries that. And you're going to get it done faster because you know exactly how your product works. You know how the compound you've chosen performs and how to get it to perform at its maximum. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, please leave them below and I'm always happy to answer.